the name of the Lord, my beloved brethren. I would like in my turn to read some verses. It's from the Epistle of Romans. From chapter 7, 26. Chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. What can we say about the Holy Spirit, brethren? When I believed, there were two things that astonished me that draw me nor uh, clear, near to God. This one was the love of our Lord, which when I understood how much truly Christ loves me, it really um, drove me to Him with His love. And the second thing was His voice. A long time passed before realizing and understanding that the Lord speaks. This was something um, that I haven't experienced before. And I was uh, thinking that the Lord speaks. Is it possible you speak to Him and He answers to you? I couldn't um, think it, of it. It was something out of my mind. But I believed it. Now, how I uh, was uh, baptized with the Holy Spirit? After the Lord regenerated me, one month after I left to fulfill my obligation in the army and there I had experienced uh, there I had my first my spiritual um, time there the Lord established me there I read the Word of God I used to um, listen sermons I finished reading my Bible when I was in the army but I remember that I wasn't very much zealous so that I may seek the Holy Spirit I wasn't asking for it with zeal I used to pray Whenever I used to uh, come out, I didn't have so much zeal to receive it because I was feeling so um, full and this regeneration was so great for me. It was so intense, so great experience that I was feeling full. And as a result of this, never did I have um, a special zeal to ask for the Holy Spirit. But of course, a Christian without the Holy Spirit is not complete. The will of God is for all men to seek the Holy Spirit so that the Lord may come and dwell within, uh, within them. I remember I was in the city of Larissa. We were uh, living for one month um, in tents with the army. And I remember it was one time that I uh, went to the church of Larissa for one more time. Whenever... I used to go out, but I remember it was a day that I was very tired, I was very sorrowed, and I used to say, what should I do? Should I go to the church or not? Something had happened that had sorrowed me very much, and I used to feel so much uh, sorrow that I didn't even want to go to the church. I don't know how the Lord eventually took me there. I remember the sermon hadn't started yet. It was prayer. And when I knelt, I said, Lord, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. And in that moment, some unknown words came out from my mouth. And I thought, hmm, it's, it's my idea. And as Brother Spirit, I started reasoning within myself. But the more I was saying this, more words used to come out. In that moment, the Lord had baptized me with the Holy Spirit, but I hadn't received power. Of course, I had felt joy. I felt that something had happened, something had changed within me. I remember that I didn't say anything to uh, the brethren. I returned back to the tent, but I couldn't pray there. I couldn't find a place to pray. Among other people, we used to sleep two by two, by two in a small tent. I used to go out while everyone were sleeping. I used to pray. Tongues used to come out, this uh, sorrow had left, and I believe that the Lord found the uh, right moment, because the Word of God says, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. And of course, it doesn't mean only the weaknesses of our body, which of course the Holy Spirit is praying also, 
but for the weaknesses of the spirit because many times we'll be weak in faith and power but the Lord will come to strengthen us with the Holy Spirit in the meanwhile I I remembered the the experience that Brother Spears had and I remember that he used to tell me that in the beginning I had doubts if the Lord truly was or the Holy Spirit and and I used to tell him when the Lord will baptize me if you baptize me with power glory be to God but if not I shouldn't have doubts that this is not the Holy Spirit because I knew that this will take me back but I did have doubts and is it or not and I used to speak in text is it is it that I'm doing this and I remember after this um, we finished with the um, with the exercise that we had with the army we got back to Larissa in our base and when a man has doubts then unbelief will come the word of God says that if you do not believe you will not be established the brother Joe read this on Sunday you will not be established you will live with his doubts and if quickly this situation won't be corrected then this won't bring good things into you into your life but I thank God because I was young in faith the Lord didn't leave me and I remember when I was in the camp after we returned back after some nights it was a morning after we woke up when we woke up the the guy that was sleeping from above me he asked me can I tell you something uh, yesterday night what were you saying and I told him what was I saying he was saying something in uh, uh, unknown tongues uh, all the time I couldn't understand a thing and I thank God because the Lord assured me and with a man who wasn't a believer and this is something that took away every doubt that I had and everything that hindered me to enjoy this uh, joy of the Holy Spirit we thank God of course my life changed and as I believed um, everyone's life has changed since the Lord since the Lord has baptized us with the Holy Spirit it is important I don't think that there is any other word to describe how much important it is for a man to have the Holy Spirit the Lord to dwell in power and this uh, waters of the living waters to spring up and and what astonished me is that the Holy Spirit groans for us the Lord himself prays for us with groanings which cannot be uttered and something last that I would like to say is that we shouldn't get used um, with the Lord with the voice of the Lord with the things that the Lord has given to us I remember in the beginning and I will say about myself how zealous I was and um, so that the Lord may baptize me I had a zeal a zeal Lord give me this and that the Lord will all assurance will do these things how to listen to the voice of the Lord but one thing is uh, that we get used to things and many times in the uh, Sunday school that we do we say that you should pray you should speak in tongues and we bring as example with how much zeal um, a brother comes to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and then he fades away we we pray less we're filled less we shouldn't get used to the voice of God I remember that in the beginning I used to hear the Lord to speak and I was astonished not when he only spoke to me but to anyone but now we get used of these things it's very important as I said in the beginning it's an amazing thing for the Lord to speak either to us or to another it's an honor for us when the Lord visits us when the presence of God comes in his voice and the Old Testament they didn't have this privilege but only the priest which used to go into the holy places which if um, but he if he wasn't clean then word to him but we have this honor to enjoy this as the Apostles to enjoy this power of the future may the Lord 
um, baptize everyone who hasn't received it and may he bless us even more Glory be to the Lord, brethren. We thank God for the Holy Spirit. Let us read some verses from the Word of God. No one knows the things of God but the Spirit of God. And we haven't received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of God, so that we may know the things that have been given to us. We thank God. And the grace of God is so great, brethren, that He has given to us, and because it's a grace, as we heard before, and I uh, imagine that we all have this conviction in our heart, that no one considers himself worthy of this gift, of this promise that we have received from our Lord. Let there be glory in the name of our Lord. And of course God gives the Holy Spirit to those who seek it, to those who are obedient, and to those who believe. Let there be glory in the name of the Lord. And God gives good gifts and if we ask for it, if someone hasn't received it and he's asking for it, the Lord will give it, my beloved brethren, because, because God is good. He's not waiting for us to become according to our own criteria, not to have any blemish so, so that he may give it to us, because then no one would receive it. I remember in the beginning of my faith, and I will tell you uh, afterwards how the Lord baptized me with the Holy Spirit. I used to say, I can't receive the Holy Spirit because I have this and that. I used to see in the Word of God, which is the mirror of the Christian, I used to see how many things I had that sorrowed God and I had to um, take out. And I still have uh, things. And because we walk toward perfection we haven't become perfect we thank God but brethren I used to say that I cannot receive the Holy Spirit I have so many things I have this and that and I remember a brother used to ask as he, he used, used to it who wants to receive the Holy Spirit let him rise up his hand I know that God is good and that he will give it to me but I shouldn't receive the Holy Spirit and I didn't uh, rise up my head not that I didn't want it but because I thought that I shouldn't receive it because I knew that if I would ask it from God I was convinced in my heart that if I would ask it the Lord would give it to me so I didn't rise up my hand and we thank God we thank God and my beloved brethren not only he who asks for the Holy Spirit will he receive it, but he also who is obedient, because he has said to the apostle when our Lord left, do not depart from Jerusalem till you receive the power of the Holy Spirit. If they didn't uh, obey in this word, would they be baptized? I don't think they would. And we have to be obedient in the word of God, my beloved brethren, we thank God. I remember when the Lord gave them me the Holy Spirit, it was two months that I was coming to the church, and specifically, um, I was reborn uh, sometime before I had received the Holy Spirit. I was very joyful that I had started to n come to know God into my life. I was 27 years old um, when I came to the church, and I came to know this life that God showed me to walk in it and 
I remember um, I had a professional trip. I was in a professional trip. I was so tired during this trip and I was sleepless for many hours for because I had some problems. And I had a trip from Thessalonica to Athens, as I was so much tired. So I remember when I was um, coming back, of course I had prayed. And I remember that at some point I fell asleep um, while I was driving and I went across to the other line. I thought I will be killed as I'm driving in this way. And then I started to pray in more intensely, uh, rather... I had stopped how much these are dangerous um, it was for me to drive, so I had stopped to s fall, uh, to sleep for one hour on the side of the road, and I thought that um, after I get this rest, I'll be fine. But I wasn't, because again, the same thing happened. And again, I used to, th uh, to get out of my line, and then I started praying more intensely. And I started asking for the help of God to help me to finish my way to my journey safely and while I was praying brethren at some point God laid into my heart and this was from God and I said Lord it would be so nice to give me the Holy Spirit so that I may serve you so that I may do your will because even today I have sinned before you and I don't want to sin before you I want what I have heard in the church to receive it also because um, as it says in the epistle to the Romans I had heard that you put to death the deeds of the word uh, the deeds of the flesh by the Holy Spirit and so I said Lord please give me the Holy Spirit so that I may so that I may be able to follow you and then another thought used to come what am I asking now is it possible for me to receive the Holy Spirit since I have so many things to, re to take out of me? And I said, I won't receive the Holy Spirit, but I should glorify the Lord because I felt the Lord um, visiting me in my car and He had took this, um, this sleep that I had so I started to sing a hymn. I didn't know the hymns. I was new in the church. And as I was trying to find the words of a uh, hymn, brethren, the Lord took my mouth with so much power. What can we say? I felt that from within my belly, as the Word of God says, the Holy Word of our Lord, I felt that it was something that was keeping in my, uh, in me, and this thing broke, and many waters came out. So much power came out that I wasn't um, a person that used to express very loudly. I was speaking lowly. I was uh, ashamed. But you'll say that. But you. Uh, you'll say that you were alone in the car. Yes, I was alone with the Lord. And the Lord took my mouth with so much power. He started, and my, uh, my mouth started to speak the great things of God. Of course, I stopped by the side. And I don't know for how much hour I stayed uh, praying and glorifying the Lord on the side of the road. And I thank God that He gave it to me with so much great power. Because, indeed, I believed it. Not for even one moment did I doubt the gift that I had received. I thank God for this. I thank God, brethren. And my beloved brethren, it's the Holy Spirit that says that it will vivid our mortal bodies. That's what it says in the epistle to the Romans. It's a spirit of adoption, not of slavery through which we cry out about our Father, let there be glory in the name of our Lord. And we thank God, brethren, because in this church, the Holy Spirit ministers. 
the Holy Spirit of our Lord. And whoever hasn't received it, they should be assured that they will receive it, brethren. They shouldn't grow weary, but they should wait, and the Lord will give it to everyone. We thank God. I remember when I arrived home, I called my fiancé, Sister Gina, and I told her, you won't believe what happened. She told me, did you receive the Holy Spirit? I said, Lord, uh, what can I say? Of course, she uh, rejoiced, and five o'clock in the morning, she started calling the brethren because of the joy that she had, so that they, he, she may tell them that I had received the Holy Spirit. Indeed, it's a great joy when someone is baptized with the Holy Spirit, first of all for himself, but we are all, we all rejoice, and there is a great joy in heaven for everyone, brethren. We thank God very much. May there be glory in the name of our Lord. Amen. We thank God, brethren, for the wonderful things that the Lord does in the life of His children. Because you do not walk um, by, by sight, by your eyes, but by faith. But the matter is that within us dwells, and the Holy Spirit assures us that Jesus Christ dwells in us. And we thank God for this. Of course, um, the Christian, first of all, is reborn. God gives him joy. He puts love into his heart. But I would say that with the regeneration, some things are limited. The time is limited. Till some point, um, the man starts to fade. And it's very possible that the man that has started his life with regeneration slowly st slowly he fades away and it's very possible to be led to worldly things and to many other things in the episode to the Galatians it says that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love joy peace long-suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control these are nine things that should consist the Christian, the man that has been baptized with the Holy Spirit. So this night, we all should ask in ourselves, do these things exist in us? These nine words that the Word of God says. Or is it that not only our regeneration has faded away, but also the Holy Spirit started to fade away? Is it that today the Lord um, hasn't given me is it that I haven't prayed with by the Holy Spirit with tongues is it that I forgot to pray in the morning is it that yesterday and the other day perhaps some days back I haven't prayed today brethren is a day that we all should ask ourselves how many days uh, is it that I haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit? Because I believe that the 90, 95% of us, of the brethren, we are all baptized with the Holy Spirit. Do we have these nine uh, uh, words that the Word of God tells us? Or is it some of those signs we have overlooked in our lives? We well, thank God. May we all, brethren, truly be of the Holy Spirit because the Spirit, the Spirit is against the flesh 
Is it that my life has changed? Okay, the Lord has baptized me with the Holy Spirit, and I am baptized with the Holy Spirit. I was baptized in 1997. But is it that during um, the first these years I used to walk with the Holy Spirit, slowly, slowly, I was tired? And very, it's very possible the anxieties and the problems, the weaknesses that had come and the needs and some things at home, some things in the church made me tired. I don't know, brethren. Do we have this desire that we had the first days? We thank God. I had a great desire, a great longing. When I came to the church, I came I was became I became a believer in nineteen ninety three. That is, till 1994, for about one year and a half, I hadn't understood a thing. Of course, um, I haven't uh, been regenerated. I used to hear the prophecies. I used to see the love of the brethren, the zeal that they had. But I didn't receive anything within me. Though I used to read the Word of God, I didn't understand a thing. But the Lord came one night, though I was praying, while I was praying, and that night, it was in the month of July. In 1994, it was Saturday. And as I lifted my heads, hands in heaven, I said, My God, I'm a sinful man, forgive me. Then I truly saw the heavens to open, and the hand of God, uh, and and lighted hand came came over me through a flame and came over me no one can doubt it to me no power that god is alive that jesus christ is alive why because i saw the hand of god and not only this but also jesus christ we thank god this was my regeneration, which regeneration lasted for about three years. During these three years, the first time, love had come into my heart, zeal had come into my heart, but slowly, slowly, all these years uh, started to fade, all these things started to fade away. Of course, I was praying for the salvation of my children, I was praying for the Holy Spirit, for many things, but slowly, slowly, all these three years, I started to get um, bored. And at some point, I said, I said, I'm a failed, I'm a failure Christian. Because God says something in me, but, I'm, but He does baptize me with the Holy Spirit. I have a blemish. I have a blemish. I remember I used to bring... The petitions every day for three years I used to used to since the Lord regenerated me um, on uh, 16th July 1994 till the 1st of July 1990 I used to give uh, this petition bring to this petition to the Lord Lord save my children and give me the Holy Spirit we well, thank God I used to bring this to the Lord every day, four days a week, for three years. How many petitions were this? So in that period, though I was feeling as a failure because something had happened at home with the relationships um, of Gina and Michael, and I prayed to the Lord and I said, I pray and you don't answer to anything. What is happening? Of course, neither do I have the Holy Spirit so that I may be able to pray more. Perhaps my prayer doesn't reach heaven. It might reach till the ceiling and there it stops. But something very nice happened. In that period that I was feeling this weakness and my failure, the Lord did something beautiful. He started to save through my family, one by one, about 10 per people, uh, along with the children, we well, thank God. But I hadn't received the Holy Spirit yet. And what can I say? My children were saved, but 
the Holy Spirit hadn't come yet. But we thank God because the Lord, brethren, is good. And then I remember in that period, that in that week, a brother came, the one who spoke just before, the, uh, the, a brother who spoke before me, and he told me, and he told me, brother, change your prayer. We used to um, sit in the same um, seat and he, uh, we used to uh, pray, Lord, save my children and baptize me with the Holy Spirit. And the brother said, brother, change your prayer. And say, Lord, baptize me with the Holy Spirit and then save my children. And indeed, that's what it was. And that's what it happened. I don't remember how many days passed it's very possible that um, it was during this week and on Saturday night I remember we had many fellowships at the houses of the brethren I went back went back at home and as I used to do we used to pray with my wife Rusula for the salvation of our children for our petitions for the Holy Spirit but I was worrying in my mind. I was worrying. What is happening? What is happening? So at some point, I don't remember what time it was, I fell asleep. About around 3 o'clock, I felt someone pushing me to rise up. But I didn't do anything. I turned from the other side. And the meanwhile, uh, it was something uh, I was something I was saying something in my sleep which wasn't in Greek and I guess someone pushed me someone was pushing me to take me out of the bed and I said uh, to my wife Rusula what do you want of course it wasn't my wife Rusula it was the Lord who was pushing me to rise up and go and pray so again I turned from the other side but the third time he gave me a push I said to Rusula and I said to her, why are you pushing me? And she told me, I didn't push you. But why are you pushing me? I will fell down from the bed. Oh, I'm sleeping. I'm, I'm not doing anything. So I turned from the other side. And I fell asleep. But in the morning, though it was uh, uh, Sunday morning, we were getting ready to come to the church. I had a strong desire to rise up in the morning. It was 7 o'clock in the morning, though we used to come about 8.30, 9 o'clock. And when I rose up, I was ready, I was dressed, I went to kneel, and when I knelt, brethren, and as the previous brother said, it was like something was um, stuck within my throat, and this broke, and from within me came out great things. My uh, tongue used to change. What can I say? Your tongues used to come out, which were unknown for me, of course. Many tongues came out from my mouth, which were unknowns. And Sister Hrusula, my wife, heard this. She woke up the children and she said to them, The Lord has baptized uh, your father with the Holy Spirit. They called um, the brother at the radio station. The Lord had baptized me with the Holy Spirit because we were um, waiting for this for three years and more. Of course, from that point, um, brethren, this was a push and the boldness that the Lord had given me. And I am telling you that no one can doubt in me that Christ is alive. And no one did anyone doubt in me this thing. But what I was liking was the boldness to say what Christ has done into my life. I thank God because the Holy Spirit came to give me this power to give me this power so in that period no one could stop me I had taken the evangelistic tracts the newspapers I was giving newspapers everywhere I was um, speaking to everyone about Christ I was testifying what the Lord has done into my life the great things that he has done and I glorify God for this Many of my, of my colleagues at work heard, they took Bibles, they were listening to the Word of God, nothing stopped me, nothing could stop me. One day, 
um, the chief came uh, at work and they told me that you give um, Christian newspapers uh, tracks. We'll take you to the manager. What can I say? You can take me wherever you want. Others give leaflets about uh, political parties, but I'm giving um, leaflets about what I believe. They give the things that they believe and the things that I believe. Do I hurt anyone? So he thought about it because I had spoke to him and I had given him a Bible and he told me, no, you're right. We thank God. But it says that according to such there is no law that is the boldness that the Holy Spirit gives this uh, power of the Holy Spirit that doesn't have limits there are no limits nothing can keep you because you don't speak the things of the world but the things of God we thank God brethren but what is important brother do you feel as you felt in that day when the Lord came and baptized you with the Holy Spirit? Or is it that you have left the Holy Spirit, you have forgotten it? I have read about it. If I hadn't read it down, perhaps it would be very possible that I would um, have forgotten this day. There are six dates that I would say that they are um, very important in my spiritual life. When I came into the church, on th March on, um 1994 I was reborn in uh, 1994 it was Saturday I was baptized in water on May I received the Holy Spirit in 1997 it was Sunday the Lord made me worthy to work as a diacon in 1998 it was Thursday and the Lord made me worthy to become an elder in the church and minister my brothers and sisters on December 17th, 2000, and it was Sunday. And there is also a date which, for which there is no day nor hour, and I have left it um, blank. Perhaps the Lord will fill it in, and that is when the Lord will come and receive me. This date is open, we thank God. These are dates which have to be important in our life. We shouldn't forget them. We shouldn't forget ever who we are, where we are, what the Lord has done for us, brethren. And where we would be now if we weren't here that um, at night, in that hour. We thank God, brethren. The Lord... A hymn says that he will come and give us his gifts and his presence. We should be the ones who will accept them, who will open the door to receive his gifts and his presence. Are we ready for this? If we are ready, then we should keep nine things and have in our hearts. And I will read them once more. Because I read them every day and every day, and I thank God, that he make me it makes me worthy to read them but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self control today is a night for which we have to wonder in our hearts if we have this nine words of the gospel May the Lord bless us.